Hey, what's up everybody? So this is Russ with RWGResearch.com and I'm just putting this little snippet in the series motorcycle, zero motorcycle series. I'm still waking up. Anyway, late night last night, I was doing something that I'm going to show you right now. So typically my videos are a couple of weeks to months behind releasing from when I filmed them, depending on what project I'm working on. And that's the case in this. So I've been working on something and I haven't had time to edit some of the other footage to get a video to you. So I thought I'll make this little snippet because actually this is pretty cool. So in the last video, the very last one, uh, last week, I posted in the middle of that, right at the beginning, before we did some other stuff, that I was unboxing this thing. Well, that's my BMS for the battery that I've been waiting for that tells me a lot more data and that I'm going to use for doing other things. And I've been messing with it and messing with it and it's been driving me crazy. Uh, because I've been trying to do something that's slightly outside of my normal skill set. Um, I'm not a great programmer. I can do very small tasks, but I've been learning a lot in the last couple of uh, months about Linux and um, programming and iOS programming and all kinds of things. And so I feel a little more confident about trying some things out, but it's taking me forever. And I didn't get time to edit the video I wish to publish today, so I'm going to show you this. So let's jump right into it. I got this battery management system. It's got serial data out, and I'm trying to decode it. It's all I'm trying to do, and it's been a very difficult task. So let me show you exactly what I got going on here. All right, so there's the zero. It's got no battery in it. The battery is sitting here. Okay, so in the last video, I showed you this little unit. I don't think I even got to the base unit. Here's the head unit. All right, gives me a lot of information. You'll see more of this in the future. But it's a nice little unit. It gives each one of the belt, the cell counts, all kind of fancy stuff. We'll get to that in the future. But I took it apart. I did mount it inside the battery housing. It fits perfectly. Again, you'll see this stuff later. And I've been reading the data, okay, out with a Pico scope and displaying it here on the computer. Now... I've been trying to decode this data by running it straight into my RS-232 uh, USB adapter. Um, it's a prolific version. It's a generic one. It's a prolific, what is it, a 2 or a 3202 or something like that. Just look up prolific serial to USB converter. You'll find it. Anyway, that's it. So I connected it to my BeagleBone here. And uh, what I've done is wirelessly attached um, my computer, which you'll see in a minute, to this guy. But before we get to that, I was just looking at the data here, trying to figure out what was going on. Because when I tried to just look at the data with a program I'm trying to write, I couldn't figure it out. It's really bad to learn how to program with bad data. Okay, So I'm trying to learn how to program this stuff with bad data, and it was driving me nuts. So what I did... As I grabbed the PicoScope, pulled up the software, and you can see here we are reading the data that's coming directly out of the bus there, right? So we're connected directly over here to the PicoScope, over here to the computer. And now if you look at the data, okay, here's what the data looks like. Here, this is in hexadecimal. This is each one of the little packets. So let me pause it. There we go. So you can see the signal is low, pulse, 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 and then low. So the signal is resting low, it's pulsing, and actually if you look, the voltages are, for some reason the voltages are wrong right now. I think I have one of the settings wrong on the times 10 or 100. Yeah, I do. Here, let's just fix that. So if I put this on 100, because that's actually what I'm on, let's run it again. Okay, um, it's still a little screwy. Let's put it back so we can actually see it. I didn't do what I wanted. That's okay. Anyway, the voltage levels, when I was reading them last time, were like positive and negative 13 to 12 to 13, which is where they're supposed to be for RS-232. And RS-232, however, is supposed to be high, resting high, pulse and then resting high, and this one's not. It's resting low, pulse, and resting low. And if you look at the data, it's it's kind of screwed up. 
let's put it that way. It's very messed up. Something is not right here. Well, what's really cool, and the data I'm finding here is wrong, what's really cool about this is in my software that I was trying to program on the BeagleBone, which is in Python, I could not invert the signal in there. I couldn't find a way to invert the signal. So here I can just invert it. Think. Hit OK. Now you can see it shifted everything and you got data packet after data packet after data packet and it's the right length. And look at that. Our data, which you have no idea what this means, is correct. Now another cool thing is I can convert this to binary or I can convert this to decimal or I can convert this to actual readable characters. However, we want decimal and these numbers right here, which, um, boop, 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 let's see. Well, these won't mean a whole lot. This is the packet length. So here you can see there's 13 packets. The data is 13. Um, if I run this again, and I capture a, a big packet, let's go to single, I want to capture a big packet, 13, 13, 13, 38. Okay, this big packet, which it only threw 21 through here. That's weird. The data has been a little screwy coming through. I'm just going to run it a, a few times more here and try to capture that. I want to capture the whole packet because I want to show you something. 13. It may remain there. There's a big packet. 38. We still only got 21. That's okay. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is that the data on my screen is the data that I'm reading here, which is wonderful. So now I know finally, okay, I finally know that the data is inverted. Okay, so I got to invert the signal before I send it over to my beagle bone or else it doesn't work. And, and these are RS-232 voltage levels which means you can see like here if this is actually right which is not it's off by a factor of two so this is about 13 to 13 uh, volts something like this 12 to 13 negative and positive which means I'm screwed I can't throw in my I can't throw this into my beagle bone which only accepts 3.3 volt zero to positive it'll crash it'll burn it up so I thought to myself, huh, what do I have around here that I can use that might actually work for what I'm trying to do? Because all my electronics are actually at my other location. Well, that might work where half of my other things actually are. Okay, so I'm going to just let this thing run. All right, and <clears throat> you guys haven't seen this video yet because I haven't published it, but I took apart a plasma TV. Here are the scraps of the Plasma TV, and I did a super cool experiment, which I may or may not publish. I would like to, but it's kind of boring. But I'll do it anyway, I'm sure, just because it's fun content. This is the pile of electronics from an old um, NEC Plasma TV. And in this pile of electronics was one little tiny board connected to this port right here that had a 9-pin DB serial-looking cable on it for a de debug slash program port for this old plasma. So I grabbed that board, all right, I pulled up the data sheet because the board, well, I'll show you the board. The board is right here. It had one chip on it. That's it. Few capacitors, few resistors, and one little IC. So I pulled it up and look at that. It's a 3.3 to 5.5 volt multi-channel RS-232 line driver slash receiver. I couldn't have got any luckier. By the way, earlier yesterday, I was having a terrible, terrible day. And uh, so this was like a short of a miracle. And so here is the schematic for that chip. You got to have a couple of capacitors. You got to have um, five capacitors on the chip in order to make it work. And then here is um, right here, your in and your, your two ins and your two outs. Oh, sorry, I got that wrong. It's because I was looking at the different schematic. Let's go back up here. This one. So you got your R, RN1, and it's inverting to out. There's an enable pin, 
So the schematics upstairs, I think, but I wrote all this out. I traced and checked and found all the pins and where these went. And you can see there's three capacitors right there, two right there. There's a big one right there. That's a big filter cap. There are also a few resistors here and a few resistors here, which are in between the inputs and the outputs to give it a little bit of protection, which is pretty sweet so that we can limit the current. So what I did was I reverse engineered that and then I connected, right, this signal and this circuit actually to um, this chip. And I might be able to do this without breaking it. If I put this on there like that, you can see now we are still reading our data packets. They are no longer inverted. We have a positive, pulse, 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 positive. So this data is now wrong again. So I go back over here and I invert this back and I hit OK. And now we're getting our proper data packets. Okay, if I put this in decimal, our 13 is here, 3813, 3813. That's the, the amount of data packets. That's what that number represents. Put this back to hex. But what's really cool is you can see now my signal's proper and you can see my maximum voltage is like, uh, actually it's a tiny bit high it almost looks like, but it's about three point something volts. That's, that's a little off. I think my whole probe is a little skewed. Anyway, so let's take this back off and plug it into the UGART port, which was this one. And then what I've done, there we go. What I've done is I have now plug this into a regular UART port instead of plugging it into my USB dongle into my USB port to get the serial data. And what that allows me to do is I'm wirelessly SSH'd into the BeagleBone and I'm running a little Python script and there is the data. So I'm getting the proper data. Now in order for me to actually use the data I gotta go through and figure out how to do that but the point is is that it is working and it's short of a miracle that I had this chip the reason I'm ma making this video is because I had this circuit board and I reverse engineered the simple simple layout on this board and used it for this purpose and it's actually working now I'm not sending any data out to this there's no data in port there's just data out so that I can connect it to this system and ultimately then I can program my iPhone or iOS device to display basically this data along with the GPS data and I'm going to strap that onto the front of here and replace this box and included since now I have this very nice controller on my iPhone I can have my buttons where here this gave me max speed on the original bike and max torque right an indicator for power and a battery voltage or a little battery indicator this guy now I'm doing all that through the iPhone interface by actually connecting the USB cable into a BeagleBone now I'm not going to use this one there's a pocket version that's about 26 bucks I'm just using this one for testing purposes but I'm probably going to use the pocket one it doesn't have all the Wi-Fi and all the other stuff <sighs> Anyway, I just want to show you what I was doing. I didn't have time to edit a video for you, so I made this one to show you the, the freaking madness that I've been trying to, like, get this stuff working. And it is. It's freaking working. Now, I have to figure out how to decode all this data because this is just random stuff coming in. I have to decode this, and some of these bits are twice as long, and they have to be combined, and all this kind of junk to show the different voltages and the currents and stuff. But, <sighs> anyway... The point of this entire video is just to show you that I'm actually going to be able to make this work and I'm super excited about it. So anyway, hopefully that was somewhat interesting and if you have a question you can leave it down in the comments. I don't know how clear all this is but basically I want to take my iPhone and I want to read data from my battery and I want to put GPS on it so I have speed, battery voltages, monitors, and alarms and then I can actually interface my throttle like they did originally and feed it back out to the motor controller so I can use my constant nice ramps to keep my currents down when I'm just cruising around. 
when I want to go full out, I can change it to basically bypass mode. So it looks like things are actually coming together. Thanks for watching. God bless you guys. Read the Bible more. Have a wonderful Sunday, and I'll see you later.